Today I am making an enclosure for my new 3D printer so I can better print ABS. I started by making a coarse model of the 3D printer, trying to capture key features like the max travel of all the axes, the air ducts, and any cables. Next I designed the enclosure. This protrusion outback is basically just for the wire loop. I could have made the enclosure a simple box, but this gives me a little shelf and it wasn't that hard to make. I then laid out all the pieces I would have to cut. I'm using a thicker 5mm piece of acrylic for the door, and everything else will be quarter inch plywood or eighth inch acrylic because I happen to have a lot of that already, and thick acrylic can be quite expensive. These are some of the largest parts I've cut on my laser cutter yet. The side panels are actually too big even, so I had to cut them in two separate pieces and glue them together afterwards. These are the ducts that will suck air into the electronics of the 3D printer. I saw such a feature on the enclosure that's sold by 3D Upfitters and decided to incorporate something similar into mine as well. This horseshoe will serve as the ducting for the exhaust fan underneath the printer. To protect the wood parts, I'm giving everything a pretty sloppy coat of polyurethane. Next, it's time to assemble each of the panels. I really wanted the top to be clear so it would let in the overhead lighting from my shop, but I didn't want to buy even more acrylic, so I'm choosing here to make an acrylic window with 8th inch pieces of acrylic and the rest out of wood. Instead of using screws, I'm using half hollow rivets. This is an assembly technique I first saw in Joshua Vasquez's work, which I'll link to below. I find this method really clean and very fast. To fasten the rivet, I am using a press to flare the side of the rivet that is a small tube, but the press only has so much reach, so for pretty much all the other rivets after this, I just took the press head out and used a mallet. Of course, the one that I choose to do a close-up shot on turned out super ugly, oh well. This enclosure will have two sliding doors to access the button pad in front and the power switch in back. In order for the door to slide freely, the spacer in the frame that holds the door has to be slightly thicker than the door. So here I'm just using packing tape as a shim. The door frames rivet in place as well. Here's a closer look at the flaring tool for anyone interested. Around the door opening, I'm attaching some thin pieces to create a ledge that the door will seal against. Conveniently, the door was just cut out of the same piece of acrylic as the front panel, and the kerf leaves just enough of a gap. With all the panels subassembled, I can finally start putting everything together. I'm using 3 quarter by 3 quarter pieces of wood to secure all the edges. For each screw, I start by transferring the whole location with a through bit size, and then I switch to a smaller bit for the pilot hole, and finally I sink the screw. It was pretty awkward trying to get the first two panels together, but in the end I did figure something out. 
I made the stepped back piece from whatever scrap plywood I had, so the outside is painted yellow to help hide some of the defects. I used the same method to put screws on all the other edges. For the front, I was careful to vacuum before installing the screws since any leftover sawdust would be fully visible. The back panel did come out a little too long, so I'm trimming it on the table saw before I get any further. This white plastic plate is for a temperature and humidity meter. They're only a few bucks a piece and give me an easy temperature readout. The sliding doors get a simple handle made from a laser cut cylinder and a screw. The bottom edge of the back panel gets a notch for the power cord to escape. To help the ducts seal a little better against the body of the printer, I'm using some pieces of fleece fabric. Some spray-on adhesive turns them into little stickers that I can then apply to the wood pieces. It's also soft enough that a straight strip easily fits the curve of this horseshoe. Here I'm pre-attaching the ducts so that everything has screw holes, but It'll be much easier later on to install them permanently after the printer is already inside the enclosure. At this point, I turn my attention to making the spool holder. It'll look nice for it to be slightly decorative, so I'll go ahead and use a nice piece of walnut and make the ends curvy. Since my last video, I've still only sharpened this one chisel, but even that is still such a joy to use. One of my favorite ways to smooth concave curves is to pull a strip of sandpaper while using my thumb to force the sandpaper into the curve. This acrylic strip will clamp the stock spool holders in place. I transfer the hole locations and then drill and tap. I happen to have two of these red thumb screw caps, so that's how many I used. The spool holder mounts to the top of the enclosure with a spacer and screw on each end. Okay, so while I was installing the spool holder, I realized that I didn't actually leave a pass-through for the filament sensor wire. Um, so I could mount the filament sensor wire inside the enclosure here, um, and then I the wire wouldn't need to go outside but I think that kind of restricts the Z space here, so I don't want to do that. Um, I could drill a hole for this wire through the two layers of acrylic here, but then I'll end up with lots of chips in between those two layers that might be kind of difficult to remove. So I think I'm going to opt for drilling a hole off to the side over here through the wood and then extending this wire so that it can reach around and plug into the filament sensor which will be mounted up here above the enclosure. Here's the hole for that wire to go through. The horseshoe shape has notches that match this cutout in the front panel, 
and everything is pushed back to seal against the front face of the printer. I can now install one of the ducts and then scoot the printer as far as possible to that side, then fit the other one in. Turns out two layers of fleece was too much, but that's easy to correct. With the printer on and the fans running, you can see how air is drawn in from the sides and expelled out the front. These 3D printed plugs help seal the hole and keep the wire in place. I downloaded this hinge from Thingiverse and modified the design slightly. These are all printed in PLA, which doesn't actually require an enclosure, but also degrades more readily. I can replace them down the line with ABS if needed. Here's a close-up of what the display looks like from the outside. It's really easy to access the screen through the sliding hatch, but seeing parts of the screen, like these temperature readouts, can require a specific viewing angle. In the end, I chose to not even mount the filament sensor. It's not really going anywhere, and this way it even has the ability to move freely as needed. One of my favorite features is that because the door is slightly elevated, I can leave plenty of stuff lying around in front of the printer and still be able to open the door. I can finally start test printing some ABS parts. I want to make some parts for a future car camper project, so maybe you'll see more of that in a future video. Thank you for watching.